All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to introduce Alex Kospilov from Aquilon. He is a TPM, um, and he's been such a, a generous help with us at um, Apache Beam from everything on our website and um, different capabilities and features of Apache Beam. So I'll let him get started. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, welcome to uh, BeamIO, CDEP, uh, and Spark Receiver IO session. My name is uh, Alex Kosolopov. I'm uh, leading service delivery and technical program management and, in Aqualon and um, uh, co-presenting today with Elizaveta Lomtiva, our technical lead. Uh, Lisa wasn't able to come and uh, pre-recorded uh, demo for today's session. In this session, uh, we will recap the main steps to develop uh, an Apache BMIO um, that John just covered. Uh, and uh, we'll introduce uh, CDAP and CDAPIO. Next, we'll talk about building a streaming source uh, IO, such as uh, Spark Receiver IO, how to test IO. And uh, we will demo Aquilon Data Analytics and Machine Learning Accelerator for Dataflow. Uh, we'll start with a base uh, CDAP uh, pipeline to process uh, batch and streaming events, and then uh, we'll go to uh, more advanced use case uh, to train machine learning model and make, uh, make machine learning inferences uh, on events from Salesforce using Apache Beam. Aquilon is a digital product and software engineering company based in Seattle, Washington, Bellevue to be more precise. And uh, we are a global team and provide uh, engineering services to our clients in data analytics, machine learning, application development, DevOps, and more. Uh, we've been, uh, we are a Google Cloud partner, and uh, we've been uh, contributing to different uh, areas of uh, Apache Beam. Uh, one area is developer learning experience. We created uh, an exploratory environment for Beam developers called Playground. Um, that you can browse and try different Beam transforms. Uh, we also launched um, a guided learning experience for Apache Beam developers called, called uh, Tour of Beam. Uh, second area is uh, implementing machine learning and uh, data solutions for users and uh, running a Beam case studies program to highlight how Apache Beam helps users across industries uh, with machine learning and real-time data processing. And third is application development, such as developing Apache Beam IOs. This is where our presentation will focus on today. Um, uh, John just covered in depth um, about Beam IOs. And just to recap, uh, Beam IO is a uh, is uh, essentially a uh, read and write transformed to um, exchange data with external systems. They are designed to be efficient and scalable. And um, Beam has built-in IOs and uh, external IOs. Built-in IOs come with Beam when you install SDKs. And there's also external IOs maintained by other uh, developers. Um, our journey started, of course, with checking uh, Beam documentation and website uh, that contains a guide to uh, that lists main steps to develop an I.O. And it comes down to design, uh, development, testing, and release of the I.O. During design, we looked at the external systems. Uh, we needed to define the input-output formats for the I.O.s. Um, there's also a lot more complexity uh, because you need to connect to the external system. You need to ensure that um, security and handshake and all other details of interacting with the external systems um, are uh, accounted for in the design. Um, then we looked at the read and write transforms and how to design them. For read transforms, Beam recommends a splittable do funds. And for write transforms, uh, those are just uh, regular do funds. Um, and last step, we had to think about the use cases, how developers are going to use the I.O. 
what kind of uh, flexibility they need, how they pass parameters to make IOs uh, flexible and convenient to use. Uh, development of IOs, we implemented do funds to process elements and transforms. And uh, then we moved to testing, uh, unit testing, integration and performance testing for the IO. And lastly, it was uh, getting documentation and updating Apache Beam website so that information about the IO is available to developers. Now, uh, let's talk about CDEP. Uh, CDEP is an open source platform uh, for data applications for on-premises, hybrid, and cloud environments. Uh, it is also available as a managed cloud service called Google Cloud Data Fusion. And CDEP allows, uh, provides a visual point and click interface for code-free pipeline development um, for data pipelines. Uh, it has many connectors and an ecosystem of plugins that that can be used to connect to business applications. CDEP has batch plugins and streaming plugins. Batch plugins uh, use Hadoop input and output format, uh, and streaming plugins uh, use custom Spark receivers. And both Hadoop input and output format and Spark receivers are in established uh, abstractions. Such architecture made plugins abstract, interacting with the external systems, and made it portable outside of CDEP, and created opportunity to bring some of those connectors to Apache Beam. So we created CDEP IO that provides transforms to read and write uh, data via CDEP plugins. And what it means for Apache Beam users is that pipelines can now connect to business applications like Salesforce and uh, HubSpot, ServiceNow, uh, using CDEP, CDEP uh, read and write transforms. Let's look how CDEP IO works. Uh, this slide describes at a high level uh, uh, CDEP IO implementation. So it starts with a CDEP uh, plugin class and uh, it loads uh, CDAP plugin from Maven. It's an external dependency. And uh, the plugin encapsulates definition of read and write formats for the interface with external system. Then we create a CDEP plugin, um, a CDEP plugin parameters so that pipeline can pass necessary parameters to CDEP plugin. And then we move to transform definition. We create a wrapper for CDEP, uh, CDEP plugin because we use some of the methods like init context and prepare run. And uh, here we define the actual CDAP read and write transforms. Uh, batch transforms, they use Hadoop format IO and streaming, they use Spark receiver IO. Hadoop format IO is already supported in Apache Beam and to create these transforms in CDEP IO, uh, we just implemented the transforms. Uh, to support streaming CDEP plugins, we developed Spark receiver IO that allows to read data from custom Spark receivers in Apache Beam and then we created CDAP uh, read transforms for streaming. So Spark Receiver I.O. was the, another I.O. we created, and uh, Spark Receiver I.O. provides transforms to read data uh, via custom Spark receivers. Custom Spark receivers are objects in Spark streaming that can be run on worker nodes, and they can receive data from external systems and move that data to Spark. Um, they've been backbone of Spark streaming analytics and uh, a portable contract since they were introduced in Spark streaming. Spark receiver IO uh, does not need Spark execution environment. It uses Spark receiver definition and then uh, uh, your regular Beam pipeline can, uh, can be executed in, in supported runners and uh, receive data using Spark Receiver I.O. Uh, Spark Receivers have, have 
couple prerequisites to be supported for this. One is uh, they need to implement has offset interface. And second, uh, they need to provide a numeric field um, that represents the offset that is used in to, uh, to split restrictions and uh, navigate the offset. Let's look at Spark Receiver I.O. So it starts with uh, transform definition and uh, then we define Spark Receiver Dufan, which is a splittable Dufan. A Spark Receiver Dufan uh, execution involves uh, three main objects. It's a uh, Spark Consumer, Spark Receiver, and Spark Supervisor. Spark Consumer is an interface to start and stop reading uh, from Spark Receiver and it reads into data structure and depending on implementation um, this data structure can be in memory or in storage and is used to resume processing and subsequent se steps. Spark Consumer interacts with Receiver and Supervisor. Uh, supervisor is an abstract class in Spark that provides interfaces to the receiver to handle data that receiver receives. And receiver is the class that interacts with external system. Uh, we, had to, we had to extend the default supervisor and uh, build our, uh, our store function so that receiver uses our store function to uh, to move data to Apache Beam instead of Spark. You might, and a consumer and receiver are now in one-to-one -one relationship. You might be wondering, how can we support parallel processing in Spark Receiver IO workflow with this design? Uh, so let's look at, uh, let's look at the levels of uh, parallelism and how to achieve parallelism from the viewpoint of I.O. Uh, there are three levels that I.O.s are concerned about. One uh, is input parallelism. Uh, can we read from data source in a parallel manner? Second is interstage parallelism and that is ability to split processing across workers. Uh, for example, uh, key-based uh, data partitioning. And third is intrastage parallelism. Uh, that is the ability to split element processing within transforms. For example, using splittable DoFans. We'll start with data source parallelism. And uh, John mentioned Kafka is a great example. We have topics in Kafka and we have partitions in Kafka. And uh, we can parallelize reading from uh, Kafka uh, using splittable DoFans. Uh, how was it done in uh, Spark Receiver I.O.? In current design, a source, uh, we have a source object and uh, we have receiver builder. Receiver builder can build multiple Spark receivers that allows us to parallelize reading from the source. Let's move to interstage parallelism. And this refers to ability to split processing uh, transforms uh, when they are independent of each other across different workers. Uh, another example is key-based operations, for example, a group by key, um, when a shuffle operation uh, serializes and transfers data, it can be parallelized by, to process elements uh, by key uh, by different workers. And typically, interstage parallelism is where runner-specific optimizations come in. So from the standpoint of I.O., we, we didn't have to do anything special. We used the features of supported runners uh, for that. And Spark Receiver I.O. supports direct runner and data flow runner. Now let's continue with intrastage parallelism. And intrastage parallelism is, uh, can be achieved with splittable DoFans. Uh, this is ability to split processing of, uh, within a single transform. 
Uh, you might be familiar with SDFs, but to recap, uh, SDF is an extension of Dufan and provides a unified um, API for bounded and unbounded uh, sources. And SDFs allow elements in the input P collection to be split by a runner initiated split and then parallel processing can happen. Um, each restriction, how do SDFs work? Each uh, restriction, each element is paired with a restriction. And uh, input P collection, uh, when, when there is input P collection, uh, an initial restriction is created and the initial restriction represents the whole range of work uh, for the transform. Um, then split restriction method is called and split restriction um, splits the initial range into multiple splits and then beam runner can redistribute uh, these pairs of elements and restrictions to different workers. And then process element is called to, to process uh, the data. Uh, when process element is called, in this method, SDF, uh, splittable Dufan, uses a restriction tracker to claim part of that restriction. So it tries to claim, uh, claim part of the restriction if the claim is successful, SDF will continue and process the data. Uh, if the claim wasn't successful, that means that uh, all data has been processed and this SDF, uh, this instance of SDF, uh, needs to stop processing. Uh, when, when the claim was successful and SDF begins processing, uh, processing data uh, often means reading from external source, doing some computation, and outputting the data in the output P collection. And the uh, runner can initiate a checkpoint. This means that SDF needs to stop processing, and uh, it creates it creates and returns a process continuation. It's a uh, Apache Beam class that indicates how processing should continue in the future. After the checkpoint, runner will event is eventually call process element and then SDF will uh, create a restriction tracker that reflects unprocessed part of the restriction and will resume processing where it left off. Now let's look how we uh, implemented the SDF for uh, Spark Receiver I.O. Uh, we have initial restriction, and uh, then for split restriction, we created a custom restriction tracker that is specific for Spark receivers. And this custom restriction tracker allows us to split the initial range and track, uh, the, track, uh, track the offset progress. Uh, in process element, uh, like I mentioned before, we have consumer, receiver, and, uh, and supervisor objects. Uh, in consumer, um, we have a state queue that, uh, that has elements received by the receiver, and consumer uh, checks that the element belongs to the offset specific to this consumer and outputs element to the output P collection. And uh, in receiver, we implemented uh, checkpoints uh, so that a receiver is able to create checkpoint um, that is commonly used for streaming, uh, streaming pipelines to, uh, to ensure progress and, uh, uh, progress and reliability. And also, receiver um, sends an acknowledgement after checkpoints or on stop. It sends an acknowledgement to an external system that it reads from to provide at least once delivery acknowledgement. Uh, now let's try to look at this uh, as a sequence diagram. So in pipeline, we have read, uh, read transform and uh, for the read transform, 
we need to pass our Spark receiver builder and we need to pass our uh, offset function that is used by this I.O. Then when transform is applied, uh, we, uh, we apply read from Spark receiver dofun, our splittable dofun. And this splittable dofun uh, first asks receiver to uh, splittable dofun. First, it cre asks uh, receiver builder to create receiver object. And uh, then in process element, uh, we create consumer. Uh, we create consumer with the specific offset restriction for this instance of the SDF. In the consumer, we also create a state queue to track uh, records. And then uh, we call start method. And in start method, we start, we set offset in the receiver and we create supervisor that provides interface for uh, for the receiver to store data instead of Spark back to our consumer. So we override this uh, store function. And, uh, and then we call start receiver method that actually uh, starts the receiver and the receiver starts processing uh, external, uh, external system to receive data. When receiver processes interacts with the external uh, system and receives a new element, receiver is going to call store record. Uh, store record is basically an interface into supervisor and supervisor uses our custom uh, store function to uh, store data in consumer. In parallel to this receiving processing, consumer constantly checks uh, if it has any new records in the state queue. And if it has new record, consumer will pull the record from the queue. It will try to claim offset and check the offset of that element to ensure that the element is for the range that this consumer needs to process. And uh, if it's successful, it will output the record to the output P collection. And, uh, if not, it means that all records in this range have been processed and consumer needs to stop. Um, so this kind of gives a, a little more detailed look into how Spark Receiver I.O. works. And now we are uh, switching gears and um, we'll kind of look at the bigger picture for the I.O. and look at the next step, how to test I.O. Um, so I.O. testing, uh, Beam uh, provides really good documentation on the I.O. testing as well as uh, provides infrastructure for uh, integration and performance tests. Um, of course, there is uh, unit integration and performance testing. And the unit testing uh, are primarily about correctness of your, uh, of your I.O. transforms, um, handling any network failures, and uh, they, um, it's recommended that un for unit testing, uh, if, if, if a in-memory or other emulator of the external service is available, it's recommended to use uh, emulator for that. Uh, integration testing are more end-to-end -end kind of uh, uh, real-world uh, scenarios. And uh, uh, performance tests are building on the integration testing. Essentially, it's recommended to uh, have parameters in your integration test that support generating data patterns uh, for performance testing. Uh, so in, to highlight our journey, uh, we created a RabbitMQ Spark receiver on demand source uh, so it's a Spark receiver uh, source. It's a very lightweight, and we use this source for testing, for integration and performance testing. Uh, we created uh, uh, we created a script that um, Apache Beam Jenkins server can use to run the performance tests, 
and uh, store the results in, uh, in InfluxDB and uh, connect this all to Apache Beam uh, performance dashboard uh, available in Grafana. And uh, now moving to release. Uh, for release, uh, for release um, we updated Apache Beam I.O. section of the website so that uh, information about the I.O. is available um, to Beam users, as well as uh, we created, of course, uh, Java docs and uh, README style documentation um, that provides all of the details. We also uh, created complete examples. So in Apache Beam GitHub repo, there are uh, many examples that you can try when learning Apache Beam or just want to test out things. Uh, and we provide CDAPIO uh, complete examples uh, as well. Aqualon launched a data and analytics accelerators that provide, uh, that provide templates and examples for data flow and machine learning. Our co-presenter, Elisa, uh, recorded a demo with some of the examples covering CDEP.io and streaming pipelines and machine learning. Hi, my name is Lisa and I'm working as a tech lead in Aqualoon company. I had been leading CDEP.io and Spark Receiver IO development process. And now let's move on to the demonstration. Today we are presenting our Data and Analytics Accelerators repository, which provides unified examples of the use cases of batch and streaming processing of analytical data using Apache Beam IOs and Google Cloud Dataflow. In this demo, we will focus on using Apache Beam CDEP IO and demonstrate the case of Salesforce data processing with the multi-language pipeline using the machine learning model. Why Salesforce? Salesforce is the one of the most popular cloud-based CRM platforms that help businesses manage their operations. And given the prevalence of Salesforce as a business application, whether you're a data analyst or a Salesforce administrator, you can learn how to leverage the power of data to drive business growth with Apache Beam CDEP.io and machine learning. Let's look at the basic Salesforce configuration. Here we have demo setup of Salesforce objects to manage company sales in Salesforce platform. These standard objects provide the foundation for managing customer data and driving business operations in Salesforce. For demo, we will focus on the opportunity object that can be considered as a main entity in CRM company model, especially for businesses that rely heavily on sales revenue. The opportunity object represents potential sale to a customer or account and is a fundamental component of the company sales process. Firstly, it's important to say that connection to Salesforce established with the connected app. The Salesforce connected app handles the authentication and authorization processes. This is our CDEP DNA app we will use to demonstrate templates. Information that we need to connect to Salesforce is the consumer details, including consumer key and consumer secret. They can be found here. And also we need security token of the user launching the pipeline. It can be found in the profile settings. All demo templates have already been built and uploaded to the demo project bucket. You can see JSON files that contain templates definition and parameters. All steps on how to build and run demo templates you can find in our DNA Accelerators public repository. Let's start with a simple case. Batch read Salesforce data, normalize it, and write this data to the BigQuery table. Very simple and straightforward case for the tasks when we need to move our data to some storage. And now let's look at the preset batch read template run configuration. Here we see all necessary parameters to launch batch pipeline with GCloud Dataflow utility. Notice that the credentials, including username, password, security token, consumer, key and secret are illustrated here only for the clarity. All of them can be exported from the secret manager. In the current implementation, the pipeline works with the HashiCorp secret manager. I want to highlight parameters as object name uh, that represents Salesforce object that we are about to read data from. In our case, it's an opportunity object and output table spec that represents 
the BigQuery table for Opportunity object. We have already figured out the Salesforce configuration and now let's look at the BigQuery table for Opportunity object. You can see here Salesforce Opportunity BigQuery table that describes the fields of the Opportunity object that we want to save. As you can see, the table for now is empty. Let's start the template and go deeper to the stages. Here we have three steps. First, it's reading messages from CDEP Salesforce using read from CDEP Salesforce batch transform. Second, is extracting values only using coders and map transforms. And the third one is writing successful records out to BigQuery using BigQuery IO. Inside read from CDEP Salesforce batch transform, we all CDEP IO read, set plugin class, plugin config, key and value classes. I want to highlight that Salesforce batch source class is a CDEP class and imported as a dependency. As we can see, our job has been queued. So let's look at the data flow job. Here we see our Salesforce to BigQuery batch job. And it's in running job status. Let's look at the worker logs. And wait for some time when it starts reading. Now we see that our job has successfully finished. And let's check um, Salesforce opportunity BigQuery table. So all red data from Salesforce Opportunity object has been written to this table. Now to summarize, we only had to use CDEPIO Salesforce plugin read transform to get Salesforce data for further processing. Now go forward to streaming read template. For dynamic business environment, Beam can help with data processing UCRM sales opportunities close to real time using event streaming to enable real-time data to insights and actions. We will create Beam pipeline to update data as soon as it appears in the Salesforce platform and respond to changes immediately. For this scenario, we will work with the streaming template. Just like for the batch, we already have BigQuery table for output data and the preset startup configuration. Let's see what we need to start the streaming read template. The difference between batch and streaming pipeline configuration is the required output dead letter table and push topic name parameters. Output dead letter table represents the table in BigQuery where the records that fail to be processed and written to the output table will end up. The push topic name represents the Salesforce push topic that will be used by push topic listener object in Salesforce Spark receiver. As optional parameters, we have the ability to set start of set and pull frequency sec, which are used to determine where to start reading and how often the pipeline will pull for new records or updates. When interacting with an external system, it's essential to manage the rate of this request to avoid overwhelming the system or violating its rate limits, which could lead to throttling usually. This ensures that the template can be adjusted easily for any source's requirements. Let's start and see how does it work. Pipeline stages are following. First, it's reading messages in from CDEP Salesforce using read from CDEP Salesforce streaming transform. Second is transform the JSON messages into table rows to write them directly into BigQuery table. And third one is writing the successful records out to BigQuery. Uh, also, we have a couple more steps to write failed records out to BigQuery dead letter table. Read from CDEP Salesforce streaming transform, call CDEP IO read method and set new streaming plugin as CDEP plugin parameter. Also, if there are any optional parameters pull frequency second start of set, we set them in the pipeline. So, summarizing, in order to get from a batch pipeline to streaming, we need to use the streaming read transform, add a couple of required parameters to the payload, and to create a big query tables according to the schema for streaming pipeline and dead letter table. 
Since the Salesforce receiver uses the push model to read data, our pipeline will only read new records that appear after the job is started. To simulate the creating of new records in Salesforce, we implemented a producer that will generate new opportunities to platform object. We expect new events to be pushed by Salesforce to push topic, and that's when Beam streaming pipeline will receive new events from Salesforce. Now let's start the pipeline. We see that our data flow job has been queued, so let's look at this in the gcloud platform. This is our Salesforce to be query streaming job. And what we should do here is just to wait for receiver step start reading. We see that receiver has been started. That's the place where we should run our Salesforce producer to write uh, Salesforce opportunities to Salesforce platform object. So it has been started. Let's wait for the new opportunity objects have been processed. The receiver started reading new opportunity objects and writing them to BigQuery table. So let's check the BigQuery for the streaming data. Okay. As we can see, new opportunity records have been appeared in the Salesforce Opportunity Streaming BigQuery table. Now that we covered the CDEP.io pipeline for batch and streaming basics, let's consider a hypothetical real-life scenario where a business wants to apply their custom machine learning models to the Salesforce CRM data in real time when events come in. Suppose we want to detect opportunities that are statistically significant deviations from normal operating patterns. Those deviations should be taken by business as a signal to investigate, understand the reason behind the deviation, and take appropriate action because they can indicate changes in customer behavior, sales processes effectiveness, or market conditions. Simple algorithm and processing methods are not enough for this. We need a machine learning models, in particular the anomaly detection model. To demonstrate this template, we have pre-trained the PyTorch anomaly detection model using Jupyter Notebook and Apache Beam. We can see them in our DNA accelerators repository as well. But the CDEP.io read pipeline is in Java, and the ML transform was written by Python data analyst. This often happens in companies as different teams prefer different programming languages. Beam has a great way to solve this with the multi-language pipelines. To use our custom ML Python transforms, it's needed to build a custom Beam expansion service, creates and injects the appropriate language-specific pipeline fragments into the pipeline. This will also manage the dependencies associated with these transforms allowing us to package the entire execution environment. Apache BeamIO docs says how to build and deploy expansion service. So we followed the docs and built our expansion service where we installed our custom Python transforms dependencies and deployed it to the Google infrastructure. This is our anomaly detection expansion service. Also, we created a BigQuery table to display the results of the run inference execution. This table um, contains two fields, opportunity ID and anomaly cluster, to which this opportunity belongs. Let's see how does it look like. This is our CDEP run inference pipeline, and we have following steps. First, it's reading messages in from CDEP Salesforce. We use here read from CDEP Salesforce streaming transform as in a streaming pipeline. Second is to transform messages from CDEP Salesforce to rows to send them to the run inference. Uh, we run Python run inference on the third step. Fourth, we transform the run inference results into table rows to write them directly to BigQuery table. Fifth, we write the successful records and a couple more steps to write failed records out to BigQuery dead letter table. The only step I would like to dwell on is run 
Python run inference anomaly detection transform. On this step, we are applying a Python transform to a P collection of input data. Python external transform from method is used to indicate that this is a Python transform coming from an external expansion service. Anomaly detection transform refers to this Python transform. The location of the expansion service is provided by options get expansion service method. The vis key work methods are used to provide arguments to the Python transform. These arguments are the URI of the pre-trained model itself as a model as a model URI, encoder with the safe PyTorch model weights with the encoder URI, and parameters for the model as a params URI. Uh, parameters include amount of input data, number of lowers in the network, etc., which are presumably used by the anomaly detection transform. Up until now, we've used the development configuration to run data flow jobs. However, Google Cloud Console UI provides interface that is easy to use even for non-technical users, making it simple to set up and run data flow templates. I would like to demonstrate this option as well, as it's useful to conv and convenient, and it has some features compared to launching from the development environment. To launch template from the Google Cloud, you should have running expansion service, uh, upload it to the bucket template JSON, you have here and upload it to the bucket files required to execute the run inference. It's familiar to us anomaly detection model, encoder and model params. Now everything is ready to start the template. So let's create job from the template. We should specify the name and data flow template. We will use our custom template that we uploaded to the bucket. So, I pre-filled all parameters to, for convenience here. So, let's see what we have to specify. Um, the reference name and point, all required parameters as in batch and streaming pipelines. Uh, so, this time we will use HashiCorp Secret Manager to access credentials. Uh, we should pass URL to credentials in Vault and Vault token. We have Vault cluster and our Salesforce Vault with our credentials. It's consumer key, consumer secret, password, security token and username. All of them we can pass directly or use HashiCorp Vault. Back to template options. Also, we should specify host and port of Python expansion service and URI to model, params and encoder that we uploaded to the bucket. To use multi-language pipeline, we need to specify data flow runner version 2. Everything is set up and ready to start the job. It's worth saying that when using the expansion service, the time to initialize the job will be increased due to installation of the service, the cost of communication with the runner, the expansion of transforms and dependency management. So we should wait a bit for job will be initialized. Now we can see that all workers have finished the startup processes and began to receive work requests. So now we can move to worker logs and waiting for Receiver starting the processing elements. Uh, and we see that receiver has been started already. And we should start our Salesforce producer as for streaming template. Producer has started. Let's wait for the pipeline start processing new opportunity objects. The receiver has started reading new opportunity objects that were written to Salesforce object. And let's wait for the Python transform will process those elements and write results to the BigQuery table. As we can see, red data was processed. Let's check the results in BigQuery table. Uh, we see the results of the pipeline were written to the BigQuery table. 
And if we met uh, opportunities that belongs to negative one cluster as this one, it indicates that this opportunity is an anomaly and requires further consideration and determination of the anomaly causes. All right, this concludes our demo. And for summarization, I want to highlight main points. Today, we covered CDEPA Yobach and streaming usage with Salesforce platform. We demonstrated how to train ML models using Apache Beam and PyTorch, and how to use custom ML models as Python transforms to make ML inference in Beam Java pipeline utilizing multi-language pipeline and custom expansion service. All of this ML and data processing accelerators are available in Equalon Data and Analytics Open Source Accelerators repo. Give the repo a star if you find this helpful and interesting for you. Thank you. Um, so to summarize uh, our presentation today, uh, we covered uh, we covered main steps uh, of developing BMIOs uh, using splittable do funds. Um, we demoed how to uh, use CDEP.io to read uh, to read batch and streaming events in uh, from Salesforce, how to use machine learning and multi-language pipelines to make inferences on events from Salesforce using Dataflow, and um, all detailed steps are available in Aqualon Data Analytics Accelerator, so please check it out. Um, I hope you found our presentation and demo informative and uh, we have time for questions.